All right, taking a little break from the greenhouses for a little bit. I have a starter for my 3020 John Deere tractor I need to take over to my mechanics shop so he can get that put in. And I'll talk about the reason it's over there here in a second, but let me show you the starter. So here is not the original starter, but the last starter that was on the tractor. My tractor is 12 volt. Look how much smaller the newer version is. It's gonna be a lot easier to install. This thing has a bolt that is almost impossible to get out. You have to have a special made wrench to get it out. So the new one has been geared down. So it'll turn a tractor over quicker and help it start faster. So I guess this is kind of the newer version that uh, they're putting on the older John Deere tractors. Only 350 bucks, not too bad. So just when I think nothing else could go wrong today, I get a call from my mechanic who has my John Deere 3020. So the whole reason my John Deere 3020 is over at my mechanic's place is because I noticed a hydraulic leak coming out of the front end about two years ago. Maybe even three years ago, but it was a very small drip. Last year, it started dripping more. It was still just a drip, but when you're driving it all day, um, you know, the hydraulic fluid's warm, it, would, it was definitely dripping out more. And it would kind of puddle up a little bit overnight. And I was needing to refill the hydraulic fluid probably once a week. You know, maybe a couple quarts or a gallon at a time. And by the end of the season, I bet you I dumped over five or six, maybe even seven gallons of hydraulic fluid into that tractor to keep it topped off. The last thing I wanted to do was burn up a pump while I'm out spraying because my sprayer uses hydraulic. It's a hydraulic driven pump. So anyway, I, I didn't have time to mess with it and I took it over to my mechanics and he thinks it's gonna be a pretty healthy job. Like we might need to remove the front end. Actually, I think we need to remove the front end because he thinks it's coming from leaky seals of the hydraulic pump, which I replaced probably seven or eight years ago. So, we need to get this taken care of. But until I get a starter in it, <laughs> we can't start it to find out where the leak is coming from. So, we're kind of stuck right now. And here we are, a day before April. I need to get my corn planter out and get it serviced. And I think I'm just going to have to hook it up to our 4010 and maybe deal with this 3020 later because I don't have time to keep waiting on getting this thing repaired. I got to get everything ready and get out in the fields here in a couple weeks and start planting. Let's get over there and see what's going on. There she is, my beloved 3020. So we got the starter out currently. It's going to go right there. And this leak is coming from up in there. It puddles up and drips off the, uh, the steering arm or this piece of frame connected to the axle. And I was just talking to my mechanic, JR, and the only place that leak could be, could be coming from is the uh, pump, the hydraulic pump, which is up in the front end above the axle, and you can't get to it without removing the front axle. So unfortunately, we're probably gonna have to get that off so we can find out where the leak's coming from. We're both assuming it's the seals, and we'll probably have to replace all the seals in the pump. Man, not something I really wanted to have to do this time of year, but it is what it is. We have to have this tractor up and running and ready to go to plant corn in less than three weeks. Wow, this just keeps getting better and better. I'm on my way to my mechanic's shop again because we can't get the darn tractor started. This gear reduction starter has uh, one less post on it compared to my old starter. And we got a couple wires that we don't know where they go. He can't get it started. So it's April now. I can't wait any longer. I'm going over to remove my fertilizer controller off of my 3020 and I'm gonna bring it home and attach it to my, 40, my dad's 4010 to make sure it is up and running and pumping fertilizer out of my planter because I need to get things ready. I can't wait to get this tractor started. I got a couple different guys uh, that used to work for John Deere that are out on their own now that are just buried in helping other people right now. But I think I got one of them coming out later this week to look at this wiring on the starter to see if they can get it going. 
Um, I'm going to have to forget this hydraulic leak now. I just need to get my tractor back there and get it hooked up to the planter, hooked up to my sprayer, and just make sure I'm good to go. I feel like I'm behind the eight ball a little bit now. Here we are in April. Fortunately, it's cold and muddy out still, so I can't go out and plant. I got at least a week or 10 days before I can get back out there, but I don't. obviously I don't want to wait till the very last minute. So let's get this fertilizer controller off of this tractor and get it home and get it on the 4010. All right, here's a new starter already installed and basically hooked up. I mean, it looks exactly like it did on the original starter. But the original starter solenoid had another post like like this one here on the other side so we got these other wires here and i'm not even sure what this i don't know if this is another solenoid or a, maybe that's a converter from changing it over from 24 volt to 12 volt because these trackers were originally 24 volt so i'm at a loss and so is he we've tried putting this on a couple different posts so we're just going to wait until uh John Deere mechanic comes out here and takes a look at this and hopefully he can figure it out. But today I'm removing this little control box here for uh, running my fertilizer on my corn planter. Just gotta remove this negative wire from the battery terminal. about free. Attached by this big, this big strap. Okay. All the wiring's free. Now I just need to get these two 7 sixteenths nuts off and we should be good to go. Man, it's getting nice out. I did not expect to see the sun today. It's pouring down rain this morning. Of course, I couldn't find my 7 16th wrench. This will have to do. This little control box is 350 bucks. And I was having some trouble with it last year. Sometimes it wasn't working. The light would start flashing. And there is an inline fuse in here somewhere, I think. Yeah, right there, I need to check that. But I don't think that's it because it would work sporadically. And this dial wasn't, it, it was either like all the way off or all the way on. It's probably because I left it out in the rain a couple times. I bet some rain water got in here and shorted something out. but. We'll test it out and hopefully it's still good to go for this season. I don't really want to buy a new one if I don't have to, but I guess it is a small price to pay to have the proper amount of fertilizer put on your corn and beans. Well, what do we have here? Aha! Uh -huh. My beloved 3020. Back in action. Got the starter all hooked up. Purring like a kitten. There was an extra solenoid that was hanging here. It had these wires and I believe this one on it. And it mounted on my old starter. It was like a, it assisted in it starting or something I'm not sure but we just had to put some bigger eyelets on it on these wires and put them on the main stud there where he moved that old solenoid is not needed and she fired right up and all it took was a 22 year veteran of John Deere he took one look at it he knew right what to do and within 10 minutes we had the thing running so very happy to have my John Deere up and running and I'm getting ready to hook it up to this here 7,000 planter. I've been using this planter for probably 12 or 15 years, 1979. 
7,000 four row planter. Not the wide, it's the regular. I got it set up on 30 inch rows. So we're gonna get it hooked up, install my uh, pump here. We got two pumps to install, one here, and we'll get this one up and running too. So this has turned out to be a pretty darn good day. Not only do I have my John Deere 3020 back, and I'm gonna be hooking it up to the planter and hopefully have it ready to go here in the next day or two, it's 73 degrees out. It actually feels like real spring and real planting season. So I'm getting real excited about getting out in the field, getting some sweet corn in the ground here, possibly later this week if it doesn't rain. But I think they're calling for rain in a couple days and it's gonna rain for about two or three days. So it's probably gonna be another 10 days before we get some corn in the ground, but that's all right. As long as it's by April 20th, I'll, I'll be in good shape. And the other good news is, oh, by the way, today was the eclipse. It just happened about a half hour ago. It was incredible. Here in Logan County, Ohio, in Bell Fountain, was like one of the epicenters of a full solar, is that what it is, solar eclipse? Yeah. It was like nighttime. It was amazing. I'm glad I stuck around the house and quit working for a while and had the, the special glasses to look up at it. And then when the, the eclipse happened, I was able to take them off and look right at the sun, which was not there. And you know, you could see a little halo around it. And it was, it was pretty amazing. Glad I got to experience that. Oh my goodness. Oh, you can actually just stare at it now. As soon as it's just about. Oh, there it is. There it is. Full solar eclipse. The semi is coming down the road. It's like driving in the night. Man, this is crazy. Three oh nine in the afternoon. What in the world? We are currently in the middle of the full eclipse. It is not night. It is 3.10 in the afternoon and I have to turn my greenhouse lights on to see my tomatoes. This is crazy. There. Oh, the sun just reappeared. It's starting to get bright out again. Just barely. It's amazing how fast it happened. The other good news is that we are officially finished hiring. After complaining about that in my last video, I must have had eight, nine, ten more applications come in and I actually didn't even need to hire everybody that applied. I was able to weed out some of the younger 14 year old kids and a couple 15 year old kids who were just a little too young and we got a, a couple adults and uh, a couple others that returned from last year that I did not expect to come back. So yeah, I think we're gonna have our 15 to 20 kids that we need to run our farming operation this year. So that is a huge load off of my mind coming into spring that I don't have to worry about having enough help this year. I do have to do a couple interviews yet and to make it official for some of these kids, but you know, the hard part's done and now we're ready to get to farming. Well, this is where we're gonna end things today, folks. Um, in the next video, Hopefully we're planting sweet corn. If not, got a few more things I wanna show you in the greenhouse uh, with the tomatoes and talk about the bumblebees and pollination and things like that. But we've got a lot of cool content coming up, so stick around for that. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and hope to see you again real soon down on the farm.